Let's see about nasopharyngeal carcinoma, which is a malignant tumor of nasopharynx. Etiology, the genetic causes. The nasopharyngeal carcinoma is more commonly seen in Chinese population. And this is associated with Epstein-Barr virus infection. The environmental causes include air pollution, smoking of tobacco and nitrosamine which is seen in the dry salted fish. Also vitamin C deficiency can lead to nasopharyngeal cancer. Most common site is the fossa of Rosenmuller. Age, this is bimodal in distribution and it most commonly affects males than females. Next, the WHO classification based on the histopathology. The nasopharyngeal class carcinoma is classified into three types. Type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is a, it constitutes of 25% of the cases and this is called as keratinizing carcinoma. Type 2 is seen in 12% and it is non-keratinizing differential carcinoma. And type 3 is non-keratinizing undifferentiated carcinoma which is seen in majority of the cases accounting for 63%. Grossly, nasopharyngeal carcinoma can be of three types, proliferative, ulcerative and infiltrative. Proliferative, so it causes obstructive nasal symptoms. If it is ulcerative, it can lead to epistaxis or it can be infiltrative. The spread of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, first the local spread. As we have seen, the most common site of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is the fossa of Rosenmuller. From there it can spread anteriorly and it causes blockage of coana and the nasal cavity and it spreads inferiorly leading to oropharyngeal and hyperpharyngeal symptoms. Next, it can spread laterally into the parapharyngeal space and the retropharyngeal nodes. And it also extends upwards into the foramen lacerum and the foramen ovale through which it can enter into the middle cranial fossa. Next, lymphatic spread. Cervical lymph nodes are the first nodes to be seen enlarged. So, it affects the upper jugular and the posterior triangle nodes. Next, distant metastasis. It can metastasize into the lung, bone and the liver. So this flow chart shows the spread of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, mostly the local spread. So the nasopharyngeal carcinoma can spread through the eustachian tube causing serous otitis media in the ear and it can spread to the nose in the orbit producing nasal obstruction, epistaxis and proptosis. It can spread through the foramen lacerum and the foramen ovae. And it enters into the middle cranial fossa of the skull where it causes ophthalmic symptoms and facial pain due to involvement of cranial nerves 3, 4, 5 and 6. And it can enter the parapharyngeal space producing Horner syndrome due to involvement of sympathetic chain and cranial nerve palsy involving 9, 10, 11 and 12 cranial nerves. Also, it can involve the pterygoid muscle producing trismus that is lockjaw. And it can also spread to the retropharyngeal lymph nodes producing neck pain and stiffness. And the cervical lymph nodes involved are upper jugular and posterior triangle lymph nodes enlargement. And the distant metastasis occurs to the lung, liver and the bone. This is overall spread of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Symptoms of nasopharyngeal carcinoma include the nasal symptoms like nasal obstruction, nasal discharge and denasal speech called as rhinolalia clausa and epistaxis, nose bleeding. Autologic that is the ear symptoms occur because of the obstruction of the eustachian tube leading to conducting hear hearing loss and serous otitis media. Next the neurological symptoms because of the involvement of cranial nerve 6 there is squint and diplopia as the 6th that is the, the abducent nerve supplies the lateral rectus of the eye. Then due to involvement of cranial nerve 3, 4 and 6, there is ophthalmoplegia and facial pain. Cranial nerve 5 involvement leads to decreased corneal reflex. 
second cranial nerve involvement that is the optic nerve leads to blindness. 9, 10 and 11th nerve leads to jugular foramen syndrome. And because of the involvement of cervical sympathetic chain there can be Horner syndrome. Next the trotter's triad. There is a triad called as trotter's triad which includes conductive hearing loss, ipsilateral temporoparietal neuralgia and soft palate paralysis. Also, there can be cervical lymphadenopathy as symptoms. The diagnosis of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. First, we do endoscopic evaluation by under general anesthesia. This can be done using rigid endoscope or flexible endoscope. Next comes the imaging. The imaging modalities are CT, MRI, X-ray chest to detect lung metastasis and for anesthetic purposes. CT abdomen or ultrasonograph to see the liver and PET scan. Third is biopsy and fourth is audiogram for detecting the hearing loss. Next comes the TNM staging of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. T1 is when the tumor is confined to the nasopharynx. T2 is when the tumor extends to the parapharyngeal space. T3 the tumor invades the bony structure. T4 if there is intracranial extension and the cranial nerve involvement. Coming to the N, the lymph node involvement. N1 is when it is unilateral and less than 6 cm. N2 is bilateral lymph node involvement less than 6 cm. And N3 is the lymph node enlargement is more than 6 cm. Next M for metastasis. M0 is there is no metastasis and M1 is if there is metastasis. Next the staging, according to the stage based on T, N and M, stage 1 is T1, N0 and M0, stage 2 is T2, N1, M0, stage 3 is T3, N2 and M0, stage 4A is T4, N3 and M0, 4B is NE, T, NE, N but M1. So this can be easily remembered. From stage 1 to 4, it is T is 1, 2, 3 and 4 and N is 0, 1, 2 and 3. And the M in all up to 4A is M0, only in 4B it is M1. So the N is 1 less than the T. The treatment of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, radiotherapy, chemotherapy or surgery. Radiotherapy is the treatment of choice for stage 1 and stage 2. Whereas the stage 3 and stage 4 of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, we give only adjuvant treatment. Radiotherapy is by using 6000 to 7000 units of radiotherapy by linear accelerator given to both the primary and both sides of the neck. This is given by 3 dimensional conformal radiotherapy or IMRT, Intensive Modulated Radiotherapy. Next is chemotherapy. This chemotherapy is usually combined with radiotherapy and the drugs used in chemotherapy are cisplatin or cisplatin combined with 5-fluorouracil. This helps in local control and also prevents the distant metastasis. Surgery. The indications for surgery are when there is a radio resistant tumor or if there is tumor recurrence or if there is large lymph nodes. In this cases, we do surgery. This is all about the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Thank you.